Greg, every single youth minister knows the experience of seasons where all the labor, all the planning, all the trips to the grocery store to get the snacks, they just don't see growth. Mm. And you, you had a wonderful message for the youth ministries gathered this morning about your concept of a pedagogy of patience. Tell us what you mean by that. Yeah, uh, it's built on a, a couple of concepts that I, I pulled from Caps's work. Uh, he, he says there are three allies of hope. Uh, the, the first is trust, the second is patience, and the third is, is modesty. Uh, I, I'll say a little bit about the trust component because it's, it's something that uh, I think builds into this concept of pedagogical patience. Um, when you're working with large groups of young people, it's uh, oftentimes uh, we place a lot of energy on um, the ones who are deemed most difficult. <laughs> and uh, we lose sense of the greater work of working with the larger group. And it can be really challenging when the young people who we are expecting to change don't change on our timetable. It becomes really depressing, particularly, you know, I was working with young men who were coming out of prison. So if there are 200 young men and only five of them don't get shot, end up in, in prison, or, you know, I go to the funeral, um, that's really depressing work, and you, you focus on all of the negativity. And what happens when you have to leave? You leave these young people, or they leave you. Uh, I had this epiphany uh, when I was doing a, a, a session on self-care with social workers about trust, uh, which lay it, led to this, this uh, concept of pedagogical patience. And I was just talking, and. and it just dawned on me, you know, sometimes when you're preaching or you're teaching and just something just clicks. And I said, you know, we're change agents. We're kind of like travel agents. A travel agent will, um, you know, if you ask them, they'll book your hotel and they'll book your flight and they'll book your rental car. But what the travel agent will not do, the travel agent won't fly the plane. <laughs> <laughs> The travel agent won't take your bags from the, 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 the kiosk and, uh, and rent the car for you. They won't pull up to the hotel and take your bags out. As a change agent, we have to trust that God has placed other people beyond our sphere that will carry the young people to the next stage on their journey. But there's also this other concept we must not only trust, we must also realize that young people change on their own time. They have to have that sense of volition over their life, right? That's what free will is about, right? Um, so there was this young man I was talking to, and he, you know, we talked in language we can't use on camera, but he, he said in so many words, Mr. Greg, I'm grateful for all that you've taught me over these past several weeks but I got some more hustling in me. And I thanked him because I, I, I thought that was one of the most honest statements that he shared with me and that I'd heard that whole year. And what I gathered from that was that he received what I had to offer, but it wasn't time for him to change. He recognized that he was making good money I recognized it, but the seed was planted. And I think our job is to plant the seed as, as caregivers, as youth ministers. And we don't have a clue when that seed will be planted. As you just said, someone will come back to you 10 years from now and said, you know, we were walking from the sanctuary and we were eating ice cream and you said such and such to me and you'll have no clue. But the seed was planted even when you felt as if you weren't doing very much. And that's why we as, as, as uh, caregivers must be intentional about what we say, um, because we never know how what we say can change a person's life. And uh, you know, it may take 50 years. And that person may be a grandparent talking to their kindergarten grandson or granddaughter and say, there was a man named Skip Masbeck. And when I was 12 years old, he said, blah, 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 blah. 
So it might not have changed his life, but it may change the lives of his children or his grandchildren. And I think that's how God works, to build God's kingdom through planting little seeds and trusting that God will nurture those seeds over time and allow different people, and I'm mixing my metaphors, but to allow different people to come and make sure that that little seedling is growing. Um, trust, patience. It's good work.